Hey guys, it's Chris here from Chris's Creative Life and I design workshops that help you create beautiful projects from start to finish with easy to follow guides. And welcome everybody that's jumping on. I did pop on just a couple minutes early um, and I've got the links in the um, comments with the sizes, the measurements for the card I'm going to create and um, a link to the resource for um, a sheet I'm going to show you in a second. So I'm very quickly going to add you down onto my desk so you don't actually have to just look at me. You can look at a pretty card. I'm going to pull up my um, page in a second so I can kind of watch there too. But so a while ago, I did not create this live. I just created it in my office one day while I was messing around. And so it is a card I used the new, like the September stamp of the month called um, Tokens, Thoughtful Tokens. And um, so I thought it might be fun to recreate it, but I'm going to color today because you all know I love to add color to all of the things. So, and Close to My Heart has um, three sets of new pencil crayons. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about them and I'm still learning lots about them. It's been a long time since I've actually just colored with pencil crayons, probably um, since the beginning of university, since I've played with them. But, so I thought we would have some fun. So I'm gonna add my desk in here and there we go so it is a little bit dark when i go down just to the desk so i'm going to add a little bit more light but that light over top of me is like crazy bright so i don't have it on when it's just the face-to-face -face view and i might have to turn this just a little bit but we will just see because we all know also i will not be sitting down for very long but so I thought this turned out really pretty. Um, this is, like I said, a card with the stamp of the month and I was just playing around. And so this is um, toffee in the background and I did like tone on tone stamping with the stamp of the month, you know, like it's got that fun vintagey look. And then these are pieces from um, The Good Life and then there's the little sentiment block. So these are the same measurements I'm gonna use for the card today. But I'm gonna flip it around a little bit and we're gonna do it this way. Anyway, so last week I played with this fun color combination using the Say It With Style and the stencils and kind of revealing the new color of the year journey, which I love. I love, I love, love, love the new color of the year. Um, and so I thought this was a really like fun kind of play on colors. So good morning. We're going to play with the same colors today. So um, last week, if you missed it, there was a link to um, a color sheet that features um, Journey and some color combinations that you could play with. And that's where I pulled this um, from. So I used Journey and Scarlet and Glacier and Limeade and Pumpkin and Sundance. I used them all. So I think today we're not going to have exactly all of them, but maybe I do now that I'm looking at it. So, um, but if you don't have this sheet, if you just comment sheet, I can add the link in the bottom, but most people grabbed it. It was also part of my um, newsletter last week. So uh, people were able to download it. If they had problems with the link last week, they could get it, get it very easily off the newsletter, which I'm not really sure why. I, we had tested the whole link here and I didn't have any problems. So at certain points though, there did the system did seem to be running funny. But good morning, Diane. So, like I said, we're going to have some fun and we're going to mesh these two things up together and create a card. So I'm going to use this card design and this color scheme and I'm going to talk a little bit about the new pencil crayons um, so I could color with the pencil crayons. 
So I also have created a fun little resource um, because I'm going to talk a little bit about the pencil crowns. There are three separate sets, um, bright and vivid, perfect portrait, and natural landscape. And so you don't have to get all the pencil crowns all at once. They are a great price point, I will say. There is also a bundle to buy them all together. But you could also just add them one at a time kind of to your order um, as you wanted to kind of amp up your coloring abilities, shall we say. So um, for everybody, I'm pretty sure you probably assume this already, but Close to My Heart has a convention every year and we get to like play with artwork and get some advanced products, etc. And so I have attended the whole time. I've been a Close to My Heart consultant and these were in our convention bundle. So we got to play with this one set early and of course I had to get all of the other ones to go with them. Um, but so you can, the card that I'm gonna create today is mostly with these and I'm gonna use brown from another one. But I have also, I can say, used all of them in other projects that I've created since convention. So I do really like them. They are a wax-based crayon. They're very smooth to color with. Um, they are pretty true, interestingly enough, like sometimes that doesn't happen, but pretty true to their sample colors that are on the back of the box. And then each of the pencil crayons actually has like, um, its name on it, right? So it says its name, so this says like leafy green. So they're all white. They're very aesthetically pleasing to look at as a group too. And then they have like a colored end and it is pretty true to the color. So um, I added the link to this coloring sheet if you would like it. Um, you know that like it's no different really than how I create, sorry, it's going to bounce around for a second. Let's just give it something to focus on. I create kind of a sample sheet when I get a new stamp and I want to play with it a little bit. And it's kind of the same concept. So you can just print this out. I did print mine on cardstock because that's what I'll be coloring on versus copy paper, right? But when I play and I'm coloring something, it's going to be on cardstock. So I did print it on cardstock and then I colored each of the little boxes. You can also get some varying colors with the pencil crayons um, by shading them. There's different techniques. You could build up color, which is typically what I do. You can also vary your pressure to get more shading. So if you prefer to color your boxes with like different shades, you can do that. I really just wanted like, this is how I color. This is what the color is gonna look like. That's what I wanted it to look like on my sheet. But you can see here, it's pretty close. This is leafy green and this is my leafy green box. So it's a little bit lighter because obviously it's colored and not printed like on the wrapper of the pencil. Um, so if you'd like that, the download link is um, up at the beginning and um, I could come back and probably pin it after. Um, but so there's a row for each of, the each of the boxes. So each box has 12 pen colored pencils in it. So like I said, this was the one we got for convention and then I built with the other two. So it kind of depends too on how or what you color. So this is obviously like got tons of bright and I would say this is probably my most used package so far, but the other ones are creeping up. So I've been playing with like new products and stuff and, and I've been playing actually a lot with the natural landscapes and I really like these colors. Um, so like I said, they're not a bad price point to add to an order and um, there is a bundle for a little bit of savings. So if you want this, just click on the link. So like I said, we're going to create a card and we're going to use this card design, which the measurements are there. And we're going to use this color combination. 
And so the fun thing too, as I was sitting here and trying to decide what colors I was gonna use to color with, I can kind of just look at my sheet, right, against the swatching of my colors. So, and that is why I swatch all the time, right? Like I have one for my tri-blends um, because they don't look like the band color that they have around them. So, um, and you can sit there and look at something against something else when, once you've swatched it. I try to make these kind of big so that if you did, hello, so that if you did want to, if you prefer to do where you shade with them and to see that, there is enough space here. So, I'll just grab like a blank piece of paper here because then we'll get started. But I'll just show you. I prefer to build up color because that's just the way and it probably comes from playing with tri-blends for so long that maybe that's my go-to method. But you can also, by pushing harder or um, obviously more pressure on your pencil crayon, you're going to get like lighter versus darker. And this is gonna, you're, it's gonna be super hard not to see or to see on camera but you can kind of do that light pressure and then get a little bit harder and then really hard. And you do get a little bit of variation in your coloring. And like I said, it's gonna be super hard to translate onto camera. Or you can kind of color, like do your light coloring, however you would color, and then go back in and add some more depth by adding another layer onto them. And they are really nice to color with. And one other thing is that I don't know if you um, know what I'm talking about, but lots of times when you're coloring with um, pencil crayons, you get like, um, like lots of the extra lead flaking off, right? So, these don't get that though. So like it would chip off, right? And then you'd end up with like little tiny pieces on your project and then you end up smearing it somewhere else. So you kind of almost had to like clean off your piece of paper before you went on to another color. That doesn't happen with these pencil crowns, which is really nice. Also, I think that um, if I had a tip, um, you can also get some different um, depth of coloring depending on what you're coloring on. And I prefer like to have a little bit of a harder surface when I'm coloring, um, but not necessarily for these. So you can actually even just use like your little um, piece of foam that's in your um, stamp sets if you want a little bit of a softer surface underneath. So you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera, but it actually just is a little bit softer coloring as you cut, if you color on something soft. So quite often, I mean, you guys see me all the time with my Versamat out, right? I will color on my Versamat. Yes, you can use Gamasol with them. So. You can absolutely use Gamasol with it, or you can use um, a blender too. So I have both. I don't know where the sticks for a Gamasol arc, so we can't play with that today. But you can use Gamasol with them, which is like a mineral spirit and it helps you blend. I actually don't find I'm having a hard time blending at all with them, but um also at michael's they have just like uh it's their no name um colored pencil blender and you can blend with that but like i said i actually am not having a lot of trouble blending with them and then i did grab the prismacolor blenders and i actually i haven't even opened them yet because like i said i haven't had a lot of issues Yes, I, I don't know where my blending stumps are right now. And like I said, I really haven't had a ton of issues. And when I look at the difference between 
Of course, I played with um, using a blending tool and then not using a blending tool. And um, there's not a huge difference to me visually when you're looking at it. So if I'm alleviating one step, then that's a little bit faster, right? So, um, but also the little slightly soft surface is also helpful for blending or creating a soft, like I think that that's more so what um, people have a hard time with um, with pencil crayons, right? Is that, um, I don't know necessarily that it's like you, that, that you need things to blend, but you want a smooth surface. And so if you look at the difference between the two, it's just more of a muted um, look to it. And no worries, anybody can always go back to the beginning and I really have not yammered about very much to start off with. But like I said, so the coloring sheet is there. The link is right at the beginning. But so let's create a card. So um, we are mostly going to use the Brighton Vivids. And I grabbed this stamp set, which is Floral Notes, which is awesome for coloring. So A, it's a great stamp set to start coloring with. Um, because floral images, right, you can also make them kind of any color you want. So, um, I like the look of it on the pad. Yeah, so all it does really is it kind of just, um, I think that you don't get, it just, um, is a little bit softer, right? So also it, it also all comes with playing with them more and more and more, right? Like, um, and that is the difference I think also in the blending. They're very also small areas that we're coloring. So I'm also not super worried about um, having great blending because it's also not a very big area. It would be different if I was trying to color like a whole scrapbooking page or something along that lines or a super large image where I wanted to make sure that kind of it looked more blended and um, together. But like I said, this is, most of the coloring is just so small. It's kind of like the tri-blends too, right? Like tri-blends are almost too much sometimes for coloring, right? Because you don't have enough space to do as much blending as the product ha is capable of doing. I don't know if that makes sense, but try blends, you can blend them a ton, right? So, but if you don't actually have the space to create all, all the different levels of your shadow, it kind of almost seems like overkill. Don't get me wrong. I love my try blend markers, but I'm having fun with the pencil crayons. And like I said, it's a little bit faster, a little bit easier. Okay. So we're going to mesh these two cards together. But if you need an idea for stamp of the month or um, there are pictures, I don't know if I actually have posted pictures of this. I also um, was going to put up a blog post because it is associated with um, the color combination chart. And so when I asked people in my newsletter, they said they would love it if there was a blog post that was associated with some of the resources. So that is on my to do list. Just some days that to-do list is pretty long. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, as we create this card, I'm going to walk you through the parts of the card, how I changed it up and how I'm meshing these two together. So like I said, I'm going to use this pattern and that's the one that the measurements are for. So this, like I said, is toffee in the background, then with tone on tone stamping. So I wanted to kind of have that same look, but... I didn't really want to create the tone on tone stamping with this stamp set. So I thought, well, I'm going to use a piece of paper from the Mixins pack. This is a fun Mixin pack in September and October. It kind of, it's like black and whites and then um, little bits of color from that matched both the paper packs. So I picked this one with the wonky line. And so this is the, um, five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm just gonna make that my whole background. And it's gonna, this print is gonna make the camera not be very happy. We're just going to say that. 
So that is my background. But you could obviously do the same thing to get your tone on tone stamping um, on background there. Okay, so then for this card, I'm adding another layer in here. So you can see here, I just have two layers but we're gonna do three because I wanted to get all of those colors in there. So I just seem to have a little bit of a yucca on that side, so we're gonna flip it over. So I did add another layer for my matting. So we have White Daisy, then I have Glacier, and then we're gonna do the Journey. So that's what I've got there. And then I have Limeade, and pumpkin and sapphire and uh, scarlet not sapphire it's not nowhere near being blue and um sundance okay so like i said i'm going to use this same pattern but we're going to flip it this way because i want this is the floral image i picked from this stamp set so it's like the medium one so there's this big long one there's a small one and then there's the medium one and then the sentiments are, are great on here it's like love um, so you could say like with love um, there's sympathy that's the one we're going to use today so I'm going to stamp with sympathy there's missing you and then thank you you can tell this is a well-used stamp set I used it to practice coloring that is, this is the stamp set that I started practicing coloring with. So my thought process is we're going to start and we're going to go with Scarlet over here. We'll do this and then it'll be all done and we can get to the coloring. So I'm trying really hard not to stand up, but you guys, it's like literally killing me. So I'm going to go Scarlet and then Limeade. So like I said, I pulled the same color combination from this card, which I thought was super fun. Um, a fun play with the new um, color of the year. So then we're going to go Pumpkin. And I did totally think about um, like adding random stamping on here, running them through an embossing folder, all of the things, but I decided we're just gonna, we're just gonna go plain today. But all of those, you could totally use those techniques on here, okay? So then we've got this, right? So opposite, but with these colors. So we've meshed them up. So I'm gonna add these two pieces and then we will do our coloring and our stamping. So I'm just gonna add my glacier to my journey. And then, okay, there we go. That's, I, I, I thought I lost it pretty long, but in order to get this straight on my card, I am going to stand up. So, there we go. Okay, so now we have our little white daisy piece. I have my journey ink. And oh, that's funny. My pen is metallically attached to my ink pad. That's fun. So all the inks are obviously magnetic. That's funny. It was just the little, um, like little piece here that was stuck to the ink. So I am just going to add a little bit of journey ink into the background here. of my sentiment spot. And you know what, I'm just going to, we'll just put our little piece of scratch paper down. 
And I always just tap off into my ink. You guys know that versus tapping off onto my piece of paper here, right? Because I'm just going to end up throwing that in the garbage. And sometime when I need ink, I can pull that up to use it. So if I wanted to like, if I needed to color something or even if I just wanted something blended super lightly, I could very easily just pull that up. Okay, so then I do have already on my blocks. But I'm going to just, it's been a while since I've snapped with this. So we're just going to make sure we're all good. This one is, like I said, you guys have seen me use, like I said, I've used this stamp set a lot. So I have done tons of coloring with it. So we do not need to season our stamp. So I'm going to do Sympathy. And of course, I left my stamp chamois by the sink, so we'll clean it after. And then the little tiny width. I love when stamp sets for um, sentiments have like the mixed um, text types, right? Mixed fonts, really, I guess you could say, right? So we've got like the scripty and then the typewriter. I'm just going to fit this right in there. There we go. So I will clean those both up after. Okay, so I have my black pen for a reason. I'm gonna add just an outline around the edge of this. And we're just going to grab my first amount. So, there we go. Okay, so then I will tell you. Let's add this on here and then and I'm going to just do it flat and then I'm going to pop up my colors, my coloring. So there we go. And so I think I'm going to use what I actually know already, but I'm going to use dark umber from the perfect portrait for the center of the sunflower. But everything else will be coming from the um, brights. So this one I don't need. This is the box. Okay. So like how pretty do those all look in that little tray, right? Okay. So maybe I can lower you down just a little bit. So, for my coloring, I am going to use, for my greens, fresh green on just the little dainty leaves. And then, and really, there's hardly, like, because the images are so um, dainty, you like I said, you don't kind of have a ton of room. And then for any stems, I'm going to use this same leafy green. No, fresh green, sorry. I was thinking leafy green because that's the one I showed you. Okay, so then, right, it's pretty soft. And now I just want to go a little bit harder and I'm just going to go at the bottom of the leaves and just up the middle. So I just moved it off. So I have the ability to add a little bit more pressure. 
And they actually, like I said, they blend so nicely together. Okay, so then let's do our sunflower because that's kind of the um, star of the show. So I'm going to use sunburst yellow and color in my petals. And then, and I am, I'm just like coloring them in like you would color in a coloring book. And then I will add like a little bit more um, pressure if I want them a little bit darker but I am going to come back with fiery red to get my red color to tie it in with the scarlet right so and I'm going to show you something so this is my best friend It came off Amazon and they come in like a two pack and um, it's a pencil sharpener and it's automatic and it makes it so easy. It's very typically sitting on the edge of my desk. So I don't have to worry and because I don't like the remember when I was, when I was talking about the pencil crayons and some pencil crayons leave like dust. This is handy too because when you sh like when you're sharpening your pencils, right? They um, everything goes in here, and you don't end up with like um, the sharpening mess because there's still you are like sharpening off some of the color, right? So it keeps that mess contained, and I'm all about that. Oops, I hit my keyboard by accident, and I have a whole screen of emojis in front of me. So, this is like, I think, the biggest um, surface that I'm going to color. So, well, I guess this one's pretty big, too. Okay, so after I finish with the yellow, I'm going to do the center with that... Um, dark umber so that you like because that's when I think of like um, sunflowers that's what I think of right that super dark center and you can still see all the nice black crisp ink through even though the color is dark right so then now I'm going to go back in with that fiery red and do just a little bit of like adding this in here to match, not match up, but so that there's some of that red from the scarlet. And if you want to blend too, you can then also go back. Oh, that's funny. I'm the second person. So I'll tell you a funny story about this. Like I've had this for years and um, I did. I ordered it from Amazon and when it came, I was surprised because there were two in the box. And um, so <laughs> my daughter was still in school. So I said, oh, do you need a, like a battery operated pencil sharpener? And um she was so used to using like mechanical pencil. She didn't even really know what I was talking about. But it was like a bonus. And they were not very expensive. I can look for the link after. But um, I wasn't, I didn't think necessarily that I was going to need it today. So I didn't pull it up. But it is um, quite handy. Right, sometimes at night I'll just sit in the living room Um and um, color and so it's nice it can just sit on the coffee table beside me and I don't have to and it's big enough that I always know where it is right because when you have the little tiny pencil sharpeners like because I also have obviously like the little 
manual ones, right? You, I always put it somewhere and then I can never remember where it is. So it's a nice size so that I remember where exactly it is. Okay, so then the other thing with blending. So if you want another good way to blend is then to go back with your original color. Kind of, it's kind of the same concept, right, as your tri-blend markers. And it just kind of brings everything back together. And like I said, I obviously have all the blending abilities, right, with the Gamasol or the blending pencil or the blending marker. But I don't really necessarily grab for it very often. So, okay. So that is our sunflower. So then this one I'm going to do orange. And so I'm going to use the orange citrus, which I would say this one is very off from the end of the pencil crown. Okay, so you can see how dark it looks here, but look at it. Like it is like orange, orange. So we're going to do, I'm going to color the mum. And for this one, I'm just kind of laying in the color and then I'll go back and, um, and add a little bit more um, detail, like a little of uh, some darker shades. There's tons of ways to blend, like I said. So, um, Gamasol is just literally one of them, but. And I think, per personally, like, I think that um, more people use them with, like, watercolor pencil crayons, but I could be totally wrong, and lots of people just use them with colored pencils, use it with colored pencils. I don't know where my stubs are right now, though, or I would pull those out. They're somewhere in a drawer. It's like with the manual pencil sharpener, right? It, they're probably together somewhere. All those things that I always lose once I'm on camera too. That's why that good big pencil sharpener is very good. Right? I can't lose that well. I probably could lose it, but I'm probably not going to. Okay, so then once I kind of have laid in my first round of color, this stamp set has lots of little dark areas already. Right, so I can actually, like it's the artist, right? She's added already spots where you can go back in and shade. So I can just add another layer. I can actually just color some of the petals darker. You could add just um, dark in certain spots in the middle. All of those kind of things. So they all work. So now it actually has some depth and it happens like super quickly when you add a little bit more pressure and just add kind of another layer in there. And you can actually see that really well on camera. Okay, so then I want to bring in the journey. So I'm going to use the Azure Bulu right there. And we're going to do uh, this little closed flower and all of the little berries. And there's not really enough room on them to even worry about Oh, that's funny. It is, like I said too, I think that it's kind of fun because this the space is so small, you can, it's, it's a great stamp set, like I said, to practice with. The little berries, and then this little closed mum looking, I don't think it's a mum. And then I'm just going to, again, just kind of add another layer in close to the bottom where it would be darker. So just like that. 
And then we just have the large leaves left and I'm going to do them with pine green. This one's pretty close. So some of them are close and some of them aren't so close, right? So that's always why I like to um, swatch everything, right? So that you actually know what your true colors look like. So for these, I'm just going to lay in just a, a layer of um, coverage, basically. So I'm not pressing crazy hard. I'm just kind of covering my surface and they are, there's a nice, there is a nice like a waxy um, feeling to them. I'll come back and I'm going to make that a little bit darker in certain spots. And the more you color with them too, like the more your hand gets used to what you can actually make happen with just a pencil crown, which is kind of fun. And I always would start the same as like with your tri-blends, right? Start lighter than you think you're going to need, and then you can go darker. So once I have some good coverage there, then I'm going to add my next layer just in the bottom where it would be the darkest, and then a little bit up the middle on like the veins. You can also mix colors too, right? Like, so you could put layers of color onto something to shade it no differently than you would color anything else. Right? And then we just have this one leaf left here and then we'll add it to our card. So same thing, right? I'm just laying in a nice little layer of coloring and then darker at the bottom and I think that that is the thing that I enjoy about them the most is that um, with very little effort, you can get quite a nice effect, right? So there we go. We're all colored. So now we're going to add this to our card front. So of course, I'm going to pop it up on 3D foam. And so I did it so that it would fit right like that. And, okay, I grabbed thin first, so that's what we'll use. So over the course of like the next few months, I'll come back, right, and I'll show you the difference between then um, where I would maybe use my go-to of having something else to blend, right? Whatever product it might be that you want to use, right? Or try, um, or the pencils, which I don't see on my desk right at the moment, but that's okay. They're somewhere. Okay, so we're going to add this just like this. And I love that it kind of just fits, it, this, the sentiment just kind of fits in really nicely to um, the flowers. And then we're going to add some sparkle because you know that has to come somewhere. So I have the glitter gems in Journey. So we will add a few of these on here. Uh, I'm just going to grab my piercing tool. There's also um, Journey Sequins, which would look really like that's what I used right last week, right here. That would also look really good on here. So I'm going to do two up here and one over here. 
And then, just because I can, I'm going to add liquid glass onto the center of the sunflower to have that nice kind of shiny center. But of course, this I'll have to set aside to dry. Uh, it's just kind of, it'll draw your attention right to that and to my sentiment, right? So that one is still, like this will take a while to dry, so it's just kind of milky still, but here's the card. But so here's the one that I made earlier and the center is dry. And you can kind of now see the shine against that. So there we go. So like I said too, all of these things can be translated into anything. Like this, you could translate it, right? And run it up a scrapbooking page, right? It's the same kind of idea. So just because I show it on a smaller scale doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't translate into something else. Sometimes just for demo purposes, right? This is a nice scale to be using, right? Something smaller that I could actually color in the right amount of time, but this would make a great border on a scrapbooking layout, right? And even these floral images would be great on there. So there you go, guys. Uh, that's what I've got for you today. So just let me take down this light just a little bit before I go back. Because you should see like the light is like crazy bright. Um, so the link, I have added it in the comments. I will try and pin it now um, for if you want the coloring resource. And um, the measurements are there. I did add them at the very beginning. So that's what I've got for you guys today. I hope you have an awesome day and we'll talk to you later. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, just add them in the comments. Not always can I see all of the comments when I'm live. It kind of um, filters out depending on where they're coming from, but I will come back and answer them all when I have a chance. Thanks, have a great day guys, bye-bye.